and welcome to another evening of frank conversation here on hard copy i'm maupe ogun yusuf festus keyamo a senior advocate of nigeria who is more prominently known for his work in fighting for human rights and taking governments to task is our guest tonight we ask if his recent appointment as spokesperson of the Buhari 2019 campaign doesn't conflict with his calling as a human rights activist. Festus Keyamo, SAN, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you have taken up a job as President Buhari's campaign spokesperson, which not only involves marketing and defending the president, but which you've also had to defend yourself. Uh, did that come as a surprise to you, the criticism from some quarters for some people, it was kudos for some other people, it was disappointment. Did that come as a surprise to you that you had to defend yourself taking up such a job? No, never. It didn't um, come as a surprise to me. I expected it. I braced myself up for it. Mm -hmm. He did. Okay, for a number of people now, when they think of you, they think of human rights. Uh, in fact, in 2017, you were awarded the Global Human Rights Award by the United States Global Leadership Council in Washington for your efforts over the years in respect of protection and promotion of human rights and the crusade for accountable government in Nigeria. Now, how would you say that you're combining both positions? Would you say that your uh, quest for human rights, for the enthronement of human rights, has had to take the back seat in the wake of the job that you've taken on? Part of the um, quest, you know, to enthrone human rights is to ensure that you also enthrone and the rights of the people to choose who their leaders would be, enthroned through democracy. And for the first time in many years, what happened in 2015 was a revolution. Revolution in the sense that the people of this country spoke for the first time, maybe after June 12, 1993, that was the most you know, widely accepted election, so much so that the sitting president could not even contest the results. And you had a situation where one person, an ordinary human being, who had no Boy Scouts even as um, security around him, defeated an incumbent president with the Air Force, with the Navy, with all the you know, security apparatus. Well, you said he defeated the, them. The former so president, on. just he defeated a moment, them. I have to correct something. So you said he, right. he, he could not even. Well, some people will say he chose not to. No, because the I, think, I, think, the I think he chose two, not to. They're because two separate things. He chose not to because the results were too clear. Uh, you had everything in your favor. I think you, it's, it's debatable, Mr. K. Well, let's talk, let's allow debatable. me to express my thought. You're yes. not here to debate with me. No, I'm, I'm here to tell you my, my opinions. Is, so of allow things. me to tell you my opinions. Must don't be, debate with must me. Must be pointed out. I don't debate. Don't let me express my not opinion. Debating, not debating. So debate let, me, let, let me express my opinion. My opinion is that it was too clear. How would you come to court to say the police, my police, rigged against me, my army rigged against me, the INEC I appointed rigged against me. Do he they, just could not. So the army... He could not. Are they the president's army? Are they the president's because police? Because it is always a trend in Africa for the incumbents to use these law enforcement agencies to rig themselves into office. But that's and not Obasanjo the question. did it. Mm. In 20, 2003 and 2007 that we are judged to be the worst elections in the history of this country, Obasanjo did it. So it is doable. But then let us look at the fact that, you know, you are now working for a government that could be liable to committing human rights atrocities. And, you know, how do you then combine, how do you reconcile being a human rights lawyer with, you know, defending such a government? First of all, I wanted to take it from the angle when I was talking about a revolution that these people spoke through the ballot box. And those are the masses of the country that we fight for. So it is, it is, and I was part of it. I hope you know that. I have been part of it since 2007, 2011. I have been a very good fan of the president. Don't forget my, my former boss to Ghana Fahimi was a very good fan of the president. And I caught the bug. I caught the bug from there when I worked with Chief Ghana Fahimi. So I've always been a fan of the president for more than two decades. So for and you... So, and so in 2015, I was very vociferous. Of course, you know, I followed him to Chathamas. I followed him everywhere campaigning for him. So... I found it, I found, I was proud to be part of that revolution because I'd always protested against what was happening in the system with the old order. And then to be called upon to be the voice of these 15 million Nigerians who voted for him, I cannot be proud, I cannot be more proud to be this, to be, to be handed this type of assignment because I'm speaking on behalf of those 15 million people 
who I profess to be fighting for. Those are part of the masses. Those are the real masses. Mm. I am speaking for them by speaking for this president because they voted for him. What do we now make then? I mean, because sadly there have been allegations of human rights infringement, which some of your fellow lawyers have had to take up against this government. Um, the El Zagzaki case, for instance, we talk about the uh, Dasuki case, who has been granted bail for a sixth time, a record sixth time, and the government has staunchly refused to let him, you know, to obey those particular orders. How do we reconcile, you know, violating what some people might call the rule of law and, you know, uh, you know, you working for this government? No, I am, uh, I, where you say working for this government, you are yeah. getting to, getting to get, you are getting or it wrong. Or defending the president. Well, because I'm, I'm a campaign spokesperson, so I'm not working for government. I'm still a private legal practitioner. So this is more or less, you know, a pro bono job and, you know, a patriotic duty I've been called upon to perform. But let me tell you this about this El Zaki thing. He's been charged to court. And so, you know, right now, even the government has no right to even release him on bail. You, court, you know how court, long that took? The court has the right to decide his bail now. So it is not part of the... You know how long so, that process took and how some lawyers had to fight for him to be charged to court? Do you know that? Do you know that when national security is involved, you are not caught within the 24 hours rule again to be charged to court? I hope you know that. The Supreme Court told me that. In the case of Asari Dokubo, you know, I was a lawyer to most of the separatist groups, if you don't know that. Who takes and the so, decision? I know I was the lawyer to most of the separatist groups in this country. Masob, I've been the lawyer to Masob for so many years. I was a lawyer to Asari Dokubo at the time for so many years too. And they were all in prison when I fought their cases to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court talk, told me to my face, when I was pushing this issue of bail and 24 hours in rule to charge somebody to court, they said, look, Mr. G Gentleman, once national security is involved, human rights are suspended. I did not say so. The Supreme Court of Nigeria said so. Why so if the federal government felt that there was national security involved and it took some time to charge him to court, they are not caught by the normal 24 hours rule provided for in the Constitution. Would you say that the manner in which they've gone about it shows that they're convinced that they're going with the order of the Supreme Court or the ruling of the Supreme Court? What is the order? What is the, the ruling? Of, what is the you, manner you, you, in which they've gone about it?